Hi, I'm Shane. I'm Kelsey, and, and this that's is Dixie, Dixie, and we're Love Hunt for Life. We've been on the road now for 25 weeks. We have. This week got a little weird. Neither of us can really explain what we saw in the desert this week. Yeah, maybe you can help us figure it out. Um, I hope you enjoy uh, watching this week's video. If you do, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. left you last week in Ely, Nevada, where we were in the middle of a hailstorm and itching to get off that mountain. We decided to head for lower elevation in an effort to avoid the storm and also in an effort to not have to call anybody to rescue our asses, but it seemed that every direction we turned, we found more bad storms. We decided that getting out of this storm system wasn't going to be possible. So instead, we found some level ground to ride it out on. We didn't get much rain that night, so we decided to go ahead and make our way down that very bumpy road to get out of there. We had to drive through some rain to get there, but eventually we made it to our next spot in Hiko, Nevada, overlooking the extraterrestrial highway. The next morning, we were on the hunt for some ancient petroglyphs that were supposed to be in the area. Unfortunately, that road was just not made for the love hut or the truck, so we took the one and only opportunity to turn around and get out of there. We were both bummed to not be able to see the petroglyphs, but it wasn't worth putting the truck at risk. So we headed out of there with lots more plans to see cool stuff in the area. That area right there, the one that's blocked out on my GPS. Our first stop was at the iconic ET beef jerky shop. We were stoked to see that they were actually open during all of this. It was a little too late in the afternoon for us to embark on the journey down that particular highway, so we were in search for one more spot in Hiko. We found that spot and I spent the remainder of the sunshine that day singing to the aliens and of course my puppy. And then came this. We were both very excited for the adventure that lay ahead of us. So we packed up quickly and made our way to Earth Station Area 51. That's where we saw one of these signs for the first time that day. All those clouds were making sky watching pretty difficult, but it cleared up in time for us to get to the black mailbox. It's the black mailbox. You wanna know what's in the black mailbox? I do. There's Funyuns. 
there's a container that says 420 Alien Kush. It actually has weed in it, by the way. <laughs> and an air freshener. It smells amazing in there. I'm gonna put a, a Love Hut rock in there. <laughs> he eventually figured out how to shut that thing and we were back on the road again despite all of the folklore about aliens this area is actually a test site for the military and they have no speed limit so a fighter jet flew over the top of us and i immediately pulled over to get a better look at it and i got to hear something really cool which was sonic booms one after another it was time to make some lunch, set up the chair, and hope that we saw more. Although the sounds were incredible and like nothing we had ever heard, we didn't really see much there. So we hit the road again and headed towards Rachel. And that's where we found the alien bar. Unfortunately, uh, it was closed, but we met some really cool people there and they even let me buy some socks. Before talking Shane into going somewhere that I wanted to go, but he really did not. Trouble, trouble, trouble. This girl is nothing but trouble. See if you think so. How could you be this close and not come here? At this point, I was giving Kelsey clear instructions on how we were gonna turn and she was gonna take photographs as I drove off. Apparently, that was not her plan. We made it. We finally made it to the gates of Area 51. I am so pumped about this. I've only wanted to do it my whole life. I did, however, let Shane talk me out of going underneath the gate or staying until the men in green would chase us. And uh, we headed out looking for our next camping spot. He was so freaked out, in fact, that when we found this awesome spot, he wasn't even sure he wanted to stay there. It just dead ends right there. That's a, a dam. Awesome, can we stay on it? I mean, it's literally as narrow as the road. Awesome, can we stay on it? I guess. Yeah, the military test zone was literally still across the road, and we were parking on a dam, which made me slightly uncomfortable. But Kelsey was right. This was a place I couldn't turn down. It wasn't until the sun went down that I really started to question my decisions of the day. I'm not quite sure what this orb hovering outside of our window was, but it was floating and it was lit up and it was spherical. To be more exact, we looked out the window and there was a light reflecting off of that pond like there was a full moon. There was not. I can't say what it was, but I can tell you I watched it for an hour and it didn't move. Was it a government drone? Was it aliens? I don't know. It was certainly an unidentified flying object. So I guess we saw a UFO. We both fell asleep staring at the window at it, but the next morning it was gone and there was no explanation. After putting on my new alien socks to show that we're friendly, you know, we said goodbye to the weirdest place that we have ever stayed at. I 
still don't know what we saw, but I was ready to get out of there. As we headed towards cell reception, I was Googling everything I could imagine, trying to find some sort of explanation for what we saw the night before. I found nothing. We did find a great art installation on our way to Tonopah though. Tonopah is actually an interesting little tourist town with casinos and hotels everywhere, but driving through it during a pandemic was a little weird. It was like driving through a ghost town. We took the opportunity to re-up on supplies and then hit the road again as soon as possible. The windy driving conditions were exhausting, but we made it just outside of Austin to a hot spring that I had read about so we could relax for a few days. Of course, after driving about 130 miles that day without seeing a soul, we found this. Even during a pandemic, people were still flocking to the hot springs. Fortunately though, there was a road behind it that led out to some beautiful sights. We ended up driving about 10 more miles into that BLM than we intended, but we found an awesome spot so we could sit and debate over what we had saw the night before. We decided that the most logical explanation is some sort of high-tech military drone, but who knows? The next morning, we agreed that it was time to put that night behind us and enjoy the new awesome place that we had found. And I started a project that I've been waiting for just the right spot to try out. It was a truly incredible spot. So the next morning, the three of us decided that we would go out and adventure together and just see what we could find. It was a long hike of adventure for those little feet. So we decided it was time to get responsibly drunk and set some shit on fire. Over the past couple of days, I had scavenged some left behind tin from people target practicing, as well as giant boulders laying around to construct this, the hobo oven. I added charcoal to the bottom so I could slow roast a brisket over several hours without an oven. That little creation worked surprisingly well and we ended our week with one hell of a brisket. So like I said, we really don't know what we saw this week, and maybe one of you can try to help us figure that out. Yeah, guys, we might spend the rest of our lives trying to figure that one out, but we have lots of adventures uh, headed our way right now, and I hope that you'll come along for the ride. And I personally want to thank each and every one of you that subscribed to us thus far. If you haven't, please click the link below that says subscribe. You guys are awesome. Peace out. Bye, y'all. See you next week.